I think we've now been vindicated uh, in our actions that we took. Again, the Eames Bradley report coming out. Now, people at that time condemned us uh, and said we were troublemakers. But I would like to put this to them. If it hadn't have been for Fair and some other victims who were down there taking a stand, the Eames Bradley report would have went through. So I hope that's a lesson to people from the innocent victim sector and the unionist sector, that sometimes you have to stand up and make yourself heard. If you don't, these people will tramp out over the top of you. Now the other question has to be asked with the Eames Bradley. A lot of the people who replied to this response on the Eames Bradley would have been the same people who Eames Bradley spoke to. Now we raised it at the time. Where did they get their information from? Because we seen nothing that we had put into it and other groups we have spoken to, we seen nothing of their input either. So it is quite obvious that this was a government led uh, document that was all about keeping the Good Friday Agreement propped up not about the needs of people and how we can move this country on. It was about how some civil servants seen the political way forward, not how the people in this country seen the way forward. And until they start listening to people like ourselves, there will be no way forward. Because it is us, and they need to get this into their head, it is the ordinary people within the community who have to be able to move on at a speed and time that they're comfortable with. And the sooner they learn that and waking up to that, the better, instead of throwing millions away at silly projects or throwing millions away to people who are no more interested in the victims than the man in the moon is. Because that's what's going on. They built up an industry around the victim sector, which is not actually helping the victims. And a matter of fact, the people who are helping the victims are being hindered at every opportunity because we don't stand politically correct. Well, stuff your political correctness. We're only interested in helping the people that need help and moving on at a genuine speed or a genuine uh, environment where people feel comfortable. And unless we do it that way, we will never get moved on anywhere. Now on to Tony Blair. We now realise why Tony Blair did nothing for us over this last number of years. 2006, 2005, 2007... We had been lobbying Blair for a number of years in trying to get him to help us with the Libyan situation. Not only for the victims here in Northern Ireland, but for victims in the rest of the United Kingdom as well. Now that man ignored us. He ignored British citizens, some of them who had laid down their lives for their queen and country. He ignored them. And a matter of fact, they told us that the case was closed and nothing more could be done about it. And indeed, when we could, or were getting help from America, when we went over and spoke to some of the senators and congressmen there, who were prepared to help, the one question they said to us was, well, I, why is your own government not helping? Little did I know at that stage that Tony Blair was obviously uh, doing side deals and business deals while he was still Prime Minister. Thereby, he had to exclude the like of ourselves, UK citizens, from receiving any help. And I can't blame the Americans for saying at that time that uh, if your own government's not prepared to help you, why should we? Thankfully, that changed. But the point has to be made here, Mr Blair. Why did you do nothing when you were Prime Minister and in a position to actually help us? You turned your back on us. But now we see you flying out round the Middle East on a regular uh, occasion. We see you meeting people who you always seem to have problems with before uh, you left as Prime Minister. Were you setting yourself up for business before you left as Prime Minister? Is that what was going on? And basically it was stuff the ordinary people who had paid the price with their lives or with their limbs. You didn't care one stuff about them. Well, we're asking you now to answer the question. Why did you turn your back on the victims in 2006 and even indeed 2005 and 2007 when you were Prime Minister? You had the opportunity to help us close a deal at that stage and you turned your back on us. As a matter of fact, when we attended the Foreign Office, 
we were told there is no hope, no hope of this being open by the British government. And it wasn't until we had Mr Brown come into power that things changed. Very shortly after you left, Mr Blair. So it's quite obvious there's questions there to be answered. And we will be asking them questions because you will have to answer them. And the companies that you're involved with will have to answer the questions. Were they involved with Mr Blair and saying to him, get rid of these people, we can't have these people annoying uh, Libya or anywhere else uh, while we are trying to do uh, multinational deals. So basically, oil was more costly than blood. It's quite obvious that was the case. But I'll go back, I'll finish in this. Eames Bradley, dealing with the past, even dealing with the future, dealing with whatever you want, unless you include people like ourselves in it, and we have the answers. We have the answers. If they would just listen to the ordinary people. And I would say it's the same on both sides of the community. People from the nationalist community and people from the unionist community. And especially the victims. The people who paid the heaviest price of all. And in fact, we don't have a problem with the price we did pay. Because we still believe in what's right and what's wrong. It's the people who voted for what is wrong that have the problem and their conscience should be annoying them. Our conscience doesn't annoy us because we still believe in what is right and what is wrong and what is morally wrong cannot be politically correct or sorry what is morally wrong cannot be politically right.